Yo, still bills. What's the biz, yo, man? Yo, it's Friday. Nigga off the clock, finally. I'm heading to do what it is that I do. But peep game, man. We got to jump right into the ruckus, man. And we hearing Tyson Fury and Fury. Tyson Fury and Usyk is being postponed due to a cut that Tyson Fury has suffered in sparring. Man, listen, bro. Uh, as much as I want, you know, people have been right to be skeptical of Tyson Fury or whatever. Just because, you know, just the amount of game that he runs. The nigga always do, you know. It's a story I always heard growing up. The boy who cried wolf. The boy who cried wolf. The boy who cried wolf. The boy, even to this day, yo, man, stop crying wolf. You know what I'm saying? Like, that, you know, just that, you know, the parable with that story is, y'all know I mean? Shit, man, you, you know, eventually you pump faking is going to catch up to you. You know what I'm saying? You want to cry wolf, cry wolf, cry wolf, ain't nothing there. And then when it's actually something in the water, oh, shit, yo. Someone help me. Ain't no man. Yo, shut your ass up. You know, it, it, it eventually catches up to you is the point. This dude is, since he's really came into prominence, he's just always been a nigga who's just, or a dude who's always just, I don't know, man, just, you know, just, whether it's Anthony Joshua with the, you know, I'll fight you for this and that and the third. But, it, you know, just giving out bullshit ass, you know, stipulations for them to get a fight over the line. Anthony Joshua accepts. You don't hear shit from Tyson Fury. You dig? Oh, I can't see myself. Giving, I can't see me giving Usyk 50% of the proceeds. So, no, we'll do 70, 30. Take it or leave it. And I'm not talking about it no more. Usyk, all right, cool, I accept. Just give a million dollars to the Ukrainian refugee, or to, uh, to, the, to the country of Ukraine. And we can run that. Nothing. Nothing in return. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, I'm like, yo, how serious can we take this dude? You dig? And I just, that's just the energy surrounding him. Well, motherfuckers is tired of dealing with him. Like, man, you ain't talking about nothing, man. You a old dog. I don't want to hear nothing about you, bro. Like, I'm cool. So they're being very cautious and dismissive and standoffish and looking at him side eye when he is, he has a legitimate cut. There's people even going out of their way to say, yo, he stays that. That's a Photoshop cut or he cut himself for... This is, you reap what you sow, man. And when you do a lot of, you know, faulty shit, dastardly deeds, you don't have the support of the people that you want. You dig in your time of need. And maybe this ain't necessarily a time of need for you, but it's, it just goes to show the amount of people who have, you know, somewhat turned their backs on you just because of all your antics. This is the arena that you built for yourself. And now you got to stand on that. Now, do I think he cut himself? No, I don't. Because it's just too much money on the line and legacy on the line. I think it's more money than legacy with him. But the fact that the legacy is attached to the money, it's like, all right, cool. You did. We can most definitely run that. We can run that. So, if he suffered this cut and sparring, then I have no doubt in my mind that Jai Obataya was, you know, smacking on that man. Smacking on him viciously, bro. Smacking me getting kicked out of the camp. And what does that say about you to be getting smacked on in camp and getting dropped by a cruiserweight? And now you have a fight that's being postponed because of you getting smacked on in that same camp, bro. Like, I don't know what's going on with this dude, bro. And I was a, I was of the mind state that yo, did we gonna get the best version of Tyson Fury? We are gonna get the best version of Tyson, and we, I think we still will get the, <clears throat> I think we still will get the best version of Tyson Fury. But I don't think it's to the point where niggas is like, like I, I just, I don't, because of this dude, you know, the hyperbole surrounding him after he beat Wilder, another dude who had him, just drag him out to hyperbole surrounding him. They just kind of put this dude on a certain, you know, show this dude in a certain light to where he's the, he was really arguing that he was the greatest heavyweight of all time, bro, because he knocked out Dillian White. What are we talking about here? What are we talking about here? As if Dillian White wasn't knocked out twice before with the same punches, bro. Like, this isn't, Dillian White is a good quality heavyweight. He's not an all-time great heavyweight, no. I still remember Tim Bradley and, oh, man, I mean, this dude might beat Muhammad Ali. I don't, like, bro, what are we doing? This is, the, you know, just at what point do y'all say, man, yo, this is getting a little bit ridiculous. But this was the hyperbole surrounding this dude. This was the hype surrounding this dude. It was ridiculous. It was nauseating. It was, it was pungent. It was, it was reprehensible. It was all that. Whatever 
disparaging word you can think of to attach to that mindset that Tyson Fury was just this all time the, the greatest heavyweight. It was just ridiculous. Like Tyson with Mike Tyson wouldn't Mike Tyson would have went in there and got stuck, got you know got smacked on. Like bro, no. First, I don't think Tyson Fury is six foot nine. And even if he's six foot seven, that puts him in the ballpark of someone like not from a skill set standpoint, but a Jaco. I think his name was David Jaco, who was six seven in his damn self. Who Tyson? Who Mike Tyson smacked on? Jose Robota, six six, smacked on. Tony Tucker, six five, smacked on. You know what I'm saying? This is the company. This is the type of people that Mike Tyson was violating at his at his peak. But he wouldn't have been able to deal with a Tyson Fury. Fuck out of here. Fuck out of here. You did, but just, you know, the hype surrounding the dude was just really getting to a level of ridiculousness that was like, yo, y'all, some of y'all ought to know better than to say the shit that y'all saying, bro. So to hear this dude getting smacked on and, you know, in you know, camp by the likes of a Gile Pattaya to the point where we talk, it, it's no, it's, it's no, what they call it's no uh, conventional uh, uh, sparring or whatever the case. It's not enough conventional sparring. First off, I mean, just that's the objective. If you Tyson Fury, why would you be looking for some conventional work when you're fighting a southpaw? It don't make sense unless Gile Pattaya was the one saying that there wasn't enough conventional work. It's not enough conventional work. And even if that's the case, Tyson Fury is right-handed, bro. It just it just doesn't make sense. There's so many ways you can poke holes in that you know in, into that into that into that scenario. Getting smacked on like that. So I, I mean, just and it doesn't surprise me, man. Like it, it doesn't surprise me because Tyson Fury has been getting smacked on by cruiserweights since motherfucking what's his name, um, Steve Cunningham. That man got violently dropped, and he's going record with saying, "Yo, I have problems with smaller dudes." Now, granted, these ain't small dudes. These ain't small dudes. These dudes are six three. These are legitimate. These are dudes with really good dimensions, as far as a human being is concerned. Six three is real good height. Even by even, even by NBA standards, that's real good height. That's good height. So. You have all this shit sparring, uh, happening to you in camp or whatever, man. I have no doubt in my mind that Jai Patai was in there putting his foot in your ass. And I'm that much more confident that Titan Tyson, that Usyk is going to go in there in real life, put hands and feet on you. You should not be getting crashed like that and sparring by these cruiserweights. And, and what other heavyweight is, I don't even know who you in there getting work with. For you to be getting cut and sparring, bro. You dig? We what? We 15 days out from the fight, man. You ain't got the... You, 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 I, I don't think you in there sparring with no uh, headgear on. There's no way that's happening. You got. You ain't got... My sparring, you know, my, my headgear is... You know, it has the, you know, the strap around the nose or whatever. It has the strap around the nose. You're not using that... You shouldn't be sparring with headgear with you know there's you know with your face wide open this late into the training camp. And so now we have to wait a little bit longer. We gotta wait now. You dig what I'm saying? Because you be in there getting crashed, bro. You in there getting smacked on. Now we gotta get this shit postponed, and then I think you're gonna fuck around and try and do some goofy shit. I want a tune-up fight, uh, which I wouldn't normally be mad at, but under these auspices, man, it's like, yo, we, 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 we want undisputed. We want undisputed. And then even the show the G and, 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 and Usyk, he's talking about, hey, yo, man, bring me, bring me Hergovich. Give me Hergovich. They about to feed Hergovich to him, bro. Why you up here bullshitting? I'm just saying, man, like, uh, man, listen, bro, it's all bad for this dude. And it, it just it just seems like it's a sign of the times. It's like an omen surrounding this motherfucker. It's like an omen. I swear to God. I swear to God, this shit is like an omen. Just everything is just seeming to happen to you at, at the most in, at the most inopportune time for you. This is what happens when you're a dastardly individual, man. This, this is the, this is, oh shit, this is what you become subject to. 
when you do a lot of shady shit and you know in the sport when you do a lot of game goofy bullshit and you you play with people and you play with their emotions and all that and you just you know you you hold up a lot of shit man motherfuckers was making all type of uh 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 uh, uh um concessions to get you and Anthony Joshua's fight over the line during your arbitration. And you play games with that. That's another thing that you did. You play games with the arbitration. Yeah, let's get that. Yo, I ain't got nothing to worry about. We good. Eddie Hearn got contracts and everything drawn up. He's talking to the Saudis and shit like that so we can get the stadium built or whatever. Wherever we gonna put We're doing work, bro. That's a lot of work that now has to go to the wayside. You don't waste people's time or whatever because you want to sit here and play games. You've you've sown a lot of bad seeds, my dude. You've sown a lot of bad seeds. So, no, I don't feel sorry for you if you did, in fact, get cut for real. I'm more mad at him because I want to see you fear a uh, uh, Usyk going there and crashing. If you're looking for sympathy and you want people to feel sympathetic towards you because of what's happening, I don't feel sorry for you because of the goofy shit that you've been doing and that you continue to do. You've done a lot of, go you know, a lot of gang goofy bullshit, brody. We wanted undisputed last year, but you wanted to run off and fight Francis and Ganu. So I ain't got no mandatories. So okay, cool, no mandatories. Nobody is asking for you to fight him to honor a mandatory. We fight. We asking for you to fight Usyk. And you thought shit was funny. You thought shit was sweet. You thought it was a game. And then you went in there and had the most embarrassing fight of your career by losing to a novice. Not losing, but having a competitive bout with a novice. Now to add further insult to injury, you getting smacked on by Jail Pattaya and sparring. Then to add further insult to throw salt into the wound of that same energy, you get cut in sparring. And we got to postpone this fight. Now Usyk is going to be that much, because y'all both had one fight last year. So now Usyk gets to go into a fight, be a lot more sharper when he goes in here and violates for, uh, Philip Hergovich. When you come back to the, when it's time for you to rumble again, what? When it's time for you to come back and rumble again, you're not going to be as sharp and as crisp as Usyk is because he's active. He's staying active. He fought Daniel Dubois, who just came off of a career best win. You just came off of an embarrassing win to Francis Ngannou. That was last year. Like, come on, man. Just all praises to, 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 to Usyk, man. And shout out to whoever... Slice that man eye open. And shout out to Jai Pataya for getting booted out of camp because he was crashing that man. He's fighting on that undercard, bro. This is a you know, this news is what two weeks old. He gotta fly halfway around the world again because y'all kicking him out of camp. Man, come on, man. I'm I'm outie, man. Y'all stay righteous, yo. The 